nerds. A hackathon is where you, when you work for 24 hours or, or a, a period of time with a, a product um, to showcase it. And in, in February, they had a human impact hackathon where uh, the contenders were supposed to use 24 hours to show a concept uh, where they make something uh, where you use blockchain to impact uh, humanity. Uh, so the winners of the hackathon is uh, Victor Ogeman and Einar Andre Bidal, uh, a team from DNB. They are here to talk about how they won the hackathon. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I first of all have to say that it was not only the two of us in the hackathon. We had uh, three colleagues additional, Espen, Camille, and Ingvar there as well. So, as introduced, my name is Victor and Eina. We come from DMB, a department called New Tech Lab, quite new department. And uh, being members of New Tech Lab, we, we love tech. We love it in all its shapes and forms, and we could speak and discuss it for hours and days. So we very early on realized that in order to actually finish in time, we're only allotted 20 minutes, we have to create an incentive for ourselves to stop talking. So we're going to do a live cryptocurrency mining during the presentation, and I hope it works. Live demos are always uh, challenging. Unfortunately, we couldn't bring a full mining rig. We brought this small Raspberry Pi instead, powered by a battery that should be running out in 20 minutes, hopefully allowing us to just in time extract the private key and maybe have made some money. So let's try to get it all connected and see if we can work this out. So whilst that hopefully is booting up, we'll um, get going. Timing aside, uh, we will start speaking a little bit about what New Tech Lab is, what we do in DMB. Uh, Aina will then move on to speak about, there we go. Aina will then move on to speak about the hackathon, finally rounding up with some reflections on cryptocurrencies, on DLT in general, and, and hopefully provoke some thoughts and questions from you guys in the audience. And I have been struggling with getting internet, as internet access for the miner to start up here inside this concrete building. We'll give it a few seconds and see if he connects to the internet, otherwise we'll just have to give up the live demo. <laughs> Anyway, I think we, we move on from that and move back to the presentation. Sorry about that. That's always a risk. So what is New Tech Lab? We are a new department in DMB, uh, five, let's call us hackers, IT savvy people, uh, charged to investigate and try out new technology and the possible new business model that brings both to the bank and to our partners. So we can move on to the next slide. This is highly complex, and this is how we usually like to explain what we do and who we are. I will not bore you with all the details today, that's far too long, uh, but we would like to focus on, on one key aspect, uh, the question that I think we should all be asking ourselves most of the time. So if we move to the next slide, WTF, or <laughs> as we would like to put it, what's the future? I'm sure you had something else in mind, that's not what we're thinking about. But we do think a lot about what is the future, what will be happening tomorrow, because we see that most successful businesses or unicorns this last decade have succeeded because they have managed to time the development of technology trends with their business models and combining all of that, hopefully allowing us to emulate that, create exponential growth both for our employer as well as for society as a whole. That's the background why we are here today, why we're looking into blockchain and uh, more generally DLT technologies, because we, we look at it as a very promising technology and the opportunity for many new business models. Uh, we're involved in many different projects, uh, both for creating value today and for the future, and in many cases, simply to create new learnings. And I think the project that Aina will take you through will exemplify that well and exemplify how we like to work hands-on, actually getting our hands dirty and trying stuff out rather than just reading about it. Thank you, Victor. Participating in a hackathon aligns perfectly with our work, way of work and mindset. We like to get shit done and in the same time get to know our team's strengths 
and weaknesses. We did some brainstorming and ended up with the best idea, our best idea for how to make real human impact based on the hackathon criteria and the special categories. This was a 24-hour hackathon, and we haven't touched the code before or after the hackathon. We ended up winning the overall prize and scored second in the best blockchain uh, special category. So, we ended up doing a blockchain-based medical personnel crowdfunding platform. We called it Shipadoc and are now going to walk you through it. All around the world, there are a lot of ongoing disasters. And in most of them, there are massive need for medical personnel. Relief projects exist and are well planned, but there are a massive need for more funding, and especially more specialists on the ground. In Yemen alone, Doctors Without Borders have employed 1,600 people, most of them locals, but still see a screaming need for more personnel. Our solution is to promote projects in a more modern way. Funders can browse, search, and filter projects, and back the projects they care for. In this model, funders can trust that their money is well spent on a project they really care about. We target both the typical and the intypical donor that feel the urge to help. But they maybe not relate to the generic funding model that the aid organizations are going with today. We make single disasters more visible and connect medical personnel with the ongoing disasters. We are deploying smart contracts on the Ethereum platform and funds are released only when the funding goal is reached and this is all governed by the smart contract. So we're gonna do a demo. Hopefully this one works better. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. So this is my phone showing on the left. This is our front end of that we built during the hackathon at Shipadoc. So here you have our projects that are currently able you can fund. Let's go to this polio outbreak that I feel uh, I need the urge, feel the urge to do contribute to. There are a few days left of this. Three funders already. There's a five Ethereum uh, target, uh, Ether target, and then currently 2.25 Ethers contributed. I open my standard uh, Ethereum wallet app, press send, scan the QR code, hopefully. The angle is too bad, maybe. Try it on your screen instead, perhaps. Yep. The usual story with the light demos. Just give it a second, and oh, let's try another quick hack. So whilst you try to get that running, uh, please feel free to try it out yourselves. Shipadoc.org. There you go. I got the scan in. I enter how much I want to contribute. So let's say I want to put in two ether. Press next, send. And this is on the live uh, Rinkeby test network. It will take some time for the ether to pop up on the other side. We had 2.25. Let's see how long it takes. Oh. Still nothing. I feel confident it will work. Oh, there yes, we go. Uh, there we go. <laughs> so now we are way closer than reaching our funding goal. Uh, going back to our presentation. So, we are running smart contracts written in Solidity on the public Ethereum test network, Rinkabit. We have a GET server running together with our front end and database hosted on AVS. In the database, we store the project metadata and the doctor's personal data and other things. The project data could potentially be stored on-chain to make it more tamper-proof. 
and then user send their ether using a standard crypto wallet either on their phone or on their desktop. We have experimented with a few different DLT platforms and found Ethereum as one of the most mature and pleasing to work with. Documentation, test suites, and tutorials are sufficient to get started in a few minutes, fitting perfectly with the Hackathon 24-hour uh, concept. So back to you, Victor. All right, and, and I mean, we, we, we realize this is not a unique idea. There are many other products out there mm. with very si similar uh, targets, but uh, a good experience and a good way to actually get started to do something, get it done in 24 hours. I think you can all see the challenge that I alert to in actually making something out of this in reality. That is the big uh, volatility in the public cryptocurrencies today, at least almost all of them. Uh, and we, we really do see this as a challenge and something that uh, hopefully will be solved in order to create a sustainable business model or a sustainable model for society. We think that this volatility uh, needs to be uh, decreased somewhat. Many in here might say that they feel confident that that will happen in the near future or in the future. And I, I really, really hope it does because I think it could, could change things. But it also makes me mindful to think about the difference between what is and what might be tomorrow, how that relates to investment and how that relates to, to risk. Anyway, from our perspective, um, blockchain is part of it, but there's also a lot of DLT solutions out there without any public tokens or without any currencies at all. And actually most of the work that we do uh, in our daily job is related to DLT platforms without currencies. And Common to all of these and many of the public ones, we typically find a lot of good ideas, a lot of good models, uh, innovative technical solutions. For example, look at all the consensus algorithms that we've seen in the last few years, and this is really, really intriguing, and we, we're really excited by it. But we also see one problem, or at least as we see it, the main problem, and that's the uncertainty, and in particular the unclarity that, um, that we see. We do see the unclarity as a big problem today. Uh, we typically, when we look into a new product, a new technology, a new offering, we struggle to understand what's being sold technically and what's not being sold technically in this product. Don't get me wrong, it's absolutely fine to solve stuff in a non-technical way. But it needs to be clear what's being sold and what's not being sold. It's fine to have agreement, uh, classical trust, or other solutions to problems, but the big allure with DLT solutions or crypto solutions tend to be that we solve problems that we previously could not solve. We today solve them technically, creating trust in that it always works. Not everything, as I said, can be sold technically, but when it's marketed, as solving everything technically, that creates a problem. And that's really the challenge that I would like to leave with you guys, as well as with us here today, being uh, technologists, knowing more about the technology than most of the people that we meet. We need to be really, really careful about how we phrase it and what we say. We might think that we are very clear, but the recipient of the information might have a different foundation to stand on. So, so I urge all of us to be really clear on what's being sold technically or tamper-proof. What are we solving in different ways and how are we solving it? Is it by agreements or is it by, by classical trust? Of course also bearing in mind what's work yet to be done. Uh, differentiating between work that we knew we can do and it's only a matter of time and the questions that we are still investigating and we are unsure of the um, consequences. So I think that's, that's the main bulk of what we wanted to present. And now I was hoping to be able to extract some coins. <laughs> it seems like that has not worked. So we'll just finish off by saying, please do come to us, talk to us. I'm sure that you reacted to stuff we've said. I'm sure you think we're wrong in, in aspects. Come talk to us, we're here to learn. We'd love to hear input. We'd love to hear why we're wrong. Uh, if you have any questions now, feel free to ask them. Otherwise, find me, Einar, or one of our colleagues, and, and we'd love to talk to you and hear about your products.